Topspin is a software company. Specifically what we're building is tools to help artists market direct to fan and ultimately sell product direct to fan. Distribution has been commoditized. You can, for 35 bucks, go to TuneCore and, and have the same distribution as Trent Reznor. Marketing though, which is really the third thing that, that traditional music companies um, you know, have in their arsenal, is hard and getting harder. It's a web scale thing and you're crazy not to be leveraging the YouTubes and LastFMs and iMemes of the world and understanding how all of those things play into um, everything that's going on because you know you want to you want to be where the fans are. It's not build it and they will come. Everything that we build is super distributable. Even you know the the free track for email widget which a lot of our artists use. And a big moment for me even though it's really simple was seeing that free track for email widgets show up on kids' blogs. You know, hey, new metric track, come get it. And it wasn't, you know, here's a link to a, to a you know, you send it link. It was, but just put your email address here. It's super easy, it's good for the band. And then being able to look and go, wow, this blog over here is driving more signups than my own site. Maybe I should call that person up. Um, maybe we should do our next seven inch release through them first. You know, really obvious stuff, but without the data, um, you know, pretty impossible to, to get your arms around. We're definitely data nerds. We took the download data from Nine Inch Nails and put that with Google Maps. And then we're able to visualize where it came from. For the Dave Byrne Brian Eno record, we also took the sales data, uh, the actual timing of the sales, and plotted those on a map over time which was pretty fun because a, I mean, you could just see the sort of international appeal of it the moment it was released and you could also just kind of watch people wake up in waves across you know from the UK uh, over, over to the west coast. We take a percent of revenue of things that are sold so it's definitely in our interest to you know work with people who we think are going to sell but at the same time, we're not, we're, you know, we're working with a bunch of small bands like Fanfarlo is a great example of a band that is you know, not selling at the level of you know, David Byrne or Eminem, who we're working directly with because it's really interesting and we're getting a lot of interesting data out of it. The most interesting thing is that the small artists actually have the same behavior as the large artists in terms of you know, conversion, what people are willing to spend, um, that sort of thing. It's just a different scale, right? But if you're looking at it on a pure percentage basis, what percentage of people are willing to pay for the top tier item? It's the same with the small band as it is with the large band. That's really good news, right? It just it means that the dynamics are the same when you're looking across your, across your metrics, but you know you, you just have a smaller fan base. Uh, the, the things I've been telling people are, are you know, when, when artists ask, it's super straightforward at this point. You know, collect more email addresses. You know, email addresses are going to account for a large percentage of, of, your, of your sales in, in sort of a direct and permission marketing kind of way. And then participate in any other thing where a fan can express an interest in what you're doing and you can then communicate with them. Whether that's Facebook or Twitter or MySpace or, you know, collecting mobile numbers. The number one pe reason people don't go to shows is because they didn't know about them, right? So if you can get your, your if, the, if you can let your fans express an interest in you, um, and then have a way to reach reach back out to them. You know that works. I had this conversation with Mark Cates, formerly of Grand Royal, who now co-manages MGMT. Where I said, Mark, you know, look what you got going on. MGMT has a hit on the radio, which is a huge blessing. People are searching Google. They're coming to MGMT's website, and then you're sending them off to iTunes. Now next time around, I hope you have a hit on the radio because that's the only way this whole process starts again, right? iTunes emails that consumer every single Tuesday and you have no idea who the hell they are and you had them. You know, not that you shouldn't be selling through iTunes because of course you should. If people want to buy from iTunes, they can, but you've got them right on your site and you're going to send them away for someone else to collect the data and own that customer is craziness.